Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you how I made this clear card using the latest flavor of the month card kit from Scrapping for Less. I hope you'll stick around and see how I made it. Thanks so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I've really enjoyed getting to share my creations with you over the past couple weeks using the latest flavor of the month card kit from Scrapping for Less. The July 2020 theme is in the tropics, and I am sure that if you've already watched all those videos, you know why the kit is called that. If you haven't watched those videos, I will have the playlist linked below so you can go check it out. As well as the unboxing, which I shared everything you get in the kit and some extra goodies I got. Thanks so much, Teresa, for inviting me to be your guest artist this month. For today's card, I will be using collection number four, which is called In the Tropics. I just love the bright, fun colors, and I think that they're going to pair nicely with the watercolor paint set that came in the banana split add-on. Once I get started on the card, I will go to a voiceover, so make sure that if you have any questions, to leave those in the comment section below. Let's get crafty! To get started on today's card, I pulled out a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth, a water brush, and the paint set that I got in the banana split. For my watercolor piece, I will be using Wet on Wet. So I prepped my piece of white cardstock with some water, and then I started pulling in my paint colors. I'm just going to do a rainbow red to blue from top to bottom on this piece. Between each color, I do wipe off the excess onto the paper towel, and I just squeeze a little bit of water in the brush until I wipe it and it comes out clean. I do have my work surface protected with a clear cutting mat from the Dollar Tree, just because I do have quite a bit of water here that I am using. Once I have all of the colors laid down, I do go back in between each color and kind of blend those two together. And now I'm not going to show you on camera, but instead of just letting it sit and dry, I did pull out my heat tool and I just put some heat over this so it would dry a little bit quicker. Once that was all dry, I pulled in my trimmer and because I have more red than pretty much any other color on this card, I did cut off the excess from the red side only on the top, and then I cut an eighth of an inch off each side. The finished size of this piece was four and a half inches wide by three and a quarters inches tall. I wanted a very small black border on this piece, so I pulled in a piece of black cardstock and I cut it to four and five eighths inches wide by three and three eighths inches tall. I then adhered these two pieces together and because there was some warping from all the water, I did add some extra adhesive to the back to ensure that stayed nice and flat. Now it was time to do the stamping. I did pull in my Misty in case I needed to stamp anything twice since this paper does have a little texture to it. The first stamp that I'm going to be using is the two little palm trees and I placed those in the lower left corner. I stamped those a couple times just to get a nice dark black and then I cleaned it off before I move it to the new place. Now because it might still have some ink on it, I did bring in a scrap of clear cardstock to cover up my card just so I can place this and see where it goes. This time I moved the stamp down just a little bit just so there was some variation in the size of the palm trees. Then I inked that up, removed my clear cardstock, and stamped that a second time. For the sentiment on this stamp set, I chose the Tropic Like It's Hot, and I don't know about you, but when I saw this sentiment, I had a giggle a little bit. It took me back to my probably college days when I was a big fan of Snoop Dogg. Let me know below if that's the first thing you thought of too. 
Now it's time to start getting this card put together. I pulled in one of the orange papers from collection number four and I did choose the lighter side on this and I know I pointed it out in the unboxing but I love like the parchment look of these papers. I cut a piece of the orange that was five and a half inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall. Because that pattern paper does kind of have a slick texture to it and I didn't know if pens would work on it, I brought in a piece of white cardstock to write a personal message on and I cut that so it was four and a quarter inches wide by three inches tall. I also wanted a small black border on this so I pulled in that same piece of black cardstock and I cut a piece that was four and three eighths inches wide by three and one eighth inches tall. For my card base today, I pulled in an already made clear card base. I do have a Q&A video about clear cards. I will link that in the description box below if you have any questions on this. I added adhesive to the back of my orange piece and I placed that inside of the clear card and it does fill that inside completely. Next, I matted my white piece of cardstock for my personal message and that got centered on the inside. Then I added adhesive to my focal point that got centered on the front of the clear card and that hides the piece inside where my note will be. To finish this card off, I brought in the sequin mix from collection number four and I added three of the frosted sequins to the front top right of this card. I wanted to kind of bring attention to those just a little bit more, so I also pulled in some clear gems I had in my stash and added one to the center of each of those sequins. And here is a close up look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's card. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.